chances are you were given this link through a private email because most of my links are blocked off of Facebook anywhere actually and my channel has a ghost ban on it so nothing appears in search search engines if you typed in my title to a video it would not show up in a search engine it is disturbing and at a time where global strife and the pressures placed upon the common man and woman are unlike anything else ever experienced globally and I can't imagine the stress of war you know, people running from villages and people being bombed and when it's our bombs it's okay but when it's their bombs it's not okay or I get it but this link was given to you through private email because that's the only way you're gonna get a link of mine that works but somebody was concerned they love you they care about you and the problem is is that you have no clue you have no clue because most people don't and you know there's a few people who are enlightened who have done the research who have seen the patents who have studied the history that and, it, and it's not the history that you get in public school by the way and they're they're concerned they're concerned for their family's futures and there are people right now who are claiming that there's an extermination of mankind happening that they're going to try to take the global population down to 500 million people well you know in a in a world of 7 billion 500 million is not very many people and that's a georgia guidestone thing but then when other you know so yeah that that has a factual basis why because it's a factual thing that somebody carved it onto a stone and the person who financed it is is kept secret by the way nobody knows who that uh, that information does exist but you're not going to get to it and so you know how how is it that somebody is allowed to express concern without being ridiculed because the concern is out of love for you and so somebody's expressing love to you that's what they're doing when they give you something that concerns them they're expressing their love before you know for you whether they're right or wrong and if they're wrong, God bless them. God bless them for caring about you. But all conspiracy theories, every single one, right or wrong, starts with a factual basis. Let's think of one wrong conspiracy theory. Y2K, what was the factual basis? Well, the financial programs uh, on the computers that run the banking system and even Wall Street I don't have a 2,000 in their date stamps so how's that going to affect transactions okay I think that was a valuable conspiracy theory it really got us to to think about how something that simple could maybe interfere in a big way and impact your life hey wake up some of us felt it was gonna roll over to zero 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 which is what is which is what all programs do like that they have a starting point and when they get to the end point they start over again so 
So I had a factual basis. So let me give you another conspiracy theory that that most people don't know. And and thanks to channels like this, they do know now more people. But global depopulation has already happened. And it's happened on a scale of sixty six zero million people. It was called World War One and the people you see in front of you started World War One. These are all monarchs. People forget in the 1930s and 40s all of Europe and Russia and all those countries were run by kings and queens. Well, they gave them different names. Bishop, Duke, Tsar. And so these guys started a war that killed 60 million people. There is no argument about that. And the only people that argue about that are people who think the earth is flat. But here's the thing about those people. They were all blood relatives. A couple were blood relatives of the King of England, but all of the rest were blood relatives of Queen Victoria. And so how did Queen Victoria gain control of the entire world? Well, people forget that England in the early days had one of the strongest navies, had extremely well-prepared um, archers, but also, you know, formed alliances. And they ended up colonizing half the world. And soon, you know, people speaking, speaking a Slavic language resented somebody speaking English telling them how to run their country. So the monarchs were under extreme pressure, uh, uh, you know, keeping the people fed and keeping rebellion at bay. Well, when you kill off 60 million, mostly men, but also women and children, you have a tendency to limit the possibility of rebellion. Because all the men that should be throwing you out of your chair are dying in a foxhole. How convenient. After World War I, no war crimes. No tribunals. A war to end all wars. 60 million people killed. Half of those were civilians. Some of that includes the Spanish flu. 60 million people. 60 million casualties. Started by this group of men. Who all were relatives of one another. So a single family, a, I want to say this again, is it was two families. It was the king's family and the queen's family. So two families were responsible for the depopulation of 60 million individuals in a short period of time, very short period of time. How does that happen? Well, it's already happened. So when a conspiracy theorist says they're doing it again, they're doing a pandemic, I'm using quotes. When a conspiracy theorist says that, your response should be, well, two families killed 60 million people and got away with it. 
Somebody shot our president and got away with it back in the 60s. All kinds of weird things going on that each time they happen, our Constitution just burns a little more. Funny how that trend is set. With every disaster, every calamity, we lose more rights, every war. Funny. In defending the Constitution, we shred it. Now, if you have a hard time listening and this, this conversation triggers anger, I want to point you to one more conspiracy theory. Except it's not a conspiracy theory. The use of neurologic influenced radio waves, electromagnetic waves, pulsing waves, frequencies, both in the pulsation, but frequencies also in the wavelengths of energy. These are patents. These are patents, and some of them are what? To insert subliminal messages into music files? Oh, I bet that doesn't bother you at all, does it? Hey, how about this one? designed to go on TV and computer monitors. Two different frequencies, pulsation of electromagnetic frequency, that alter your brain chemistry. Oh, no wonder you're getting angry at me. No wonder you're feeling agitated. Because the word conspiracy theory has been used a million times on TV. And there is a possibility that when you hear that word, there's a pulsation going on, either causing you fight or flight, or causing endorphin release. Imagine being able to do that to the public. Well, there's patents on it. Oh, it's only used in advertising. Well, don't think the Department of Defense has an interest. Look at these. I mean, these are crazy. Uh, causing voices inside the head. Causing subliminal messages in music files. Pulsations that can cause neurological changes attached to any file. Video, audio, even text. Yeah, imagine getting pulsed while you read something. Off the news, by the way. So, mind-altering pulsing frequencies. The patents are here. The inventor is here. The date is here. And it's a list compiled just for you. And the name of that list has the word weapons on that list. Directed energy weapons. Oh no, nobody would use it on us. Well, you, for, you forget the history you were never taught. And that's another question. Why weren't you taught this? So, try not to be angry at me. Somebody wants you to be. And they want you to use the word conspiracy theory. And when you use that, it makes you feel calm. It's just a conspiracy theory. To think that, think that somebody could demo Building 7, have it fall at the rate of gravity with a steel frame? Uh, from office fires, uh, I mean, if you, I mean, just first year physics would te te teach you that could not ever happen. But that's very alarming to think that somebody can get away with it. 
And what happened? We lost our constitution. That's what happened. We went to war. That's what happened. And I want to ask you, man, just, if you think you know so much and you're all politically so astute and knowledgeable, let me ask you this question. Off the Gulf War, what entity made the most money? Was it the military industrial complex? Or was it another entity? And the answer to that question is, which most people get wrong by the way, is the banking system. Who loaned two trillion dollars at interest? Interesting, huh? So, if you're a monarch, or you think you should be a monarch, because how filthy rich you are, how would you profit off a war? Well, you would own those businesses or tax those businesses that profit off war. Textiles, iron, you know, metallurgy. Gas, oil. And of course the manufacturing of things that kill people. What if we funded the bat virus research that ended up shredding our constitution, placing us in lockdown, ruining our economy and our lives, separating families, forcing certain things on people before it had even received official approval. Talking down and hiding the side effect profiles. And now we have a war and direct confrontation. Funny how that works. We somehow, we have a direct conflict with Russia, a armed conflict with Russia over a single country, Ukraine, over one country, but lead it to our, you know, our leaders. And you've seen this with your own eyes. Every little thing gets kind of blown up. It's almost like it's orchestrated. And with all the craziness, the Black Lives Matter riots, you know, that, that where they, they had excellent television coverage of, you know, the ones holding the signs. But, you know, meanwhile, video of the police standing down while people looted, he looted and looted and looted. Um, without any concern of being arrested. And it happened in more than one city. It happened all across the nation and on a single day. And guess what? Every news station was there. They had 19 angles. And during this chaos, they had reporters on the street that were unmolested. During riots. Okay. Pallets and pallets and pallets of bricks at staging areas. I mean, how many how many different pictures of pallets 
of red brick you got to see before you and you look at the meta tags and you look at where these photos came from and you when they were posted and you're like wow it looks like it looks like somebody wanted and planned for destruction and everywhere where there was a stand down there was pallets of bricks do the research no too lazy oh let's just call it a conspiracy theory and then we can go on with our jolly lives and pretend like all is well. So depopulation has happened before. So I want to call your attention to something. This could get me in trouble. I've been looking for this, this study because it was taken offline. Or if it's online, it's buried so deep I cannot find it again. I, but this is the autoimmune disease virus assay. Okay, it's a it's an antibody test. Now you you should all be familiar with antibody tests because sometimes Doctor F said they're great for determining the efficacy of medicine, but it's not great for determining determining the resistance you get from natural exposures. So, you know, one minute antibody tests are great, the next minute they're not, but this this is an antibody test. And I'd like to read it to you. Okay? First of all, there's a disclaimer. It's not because it's so new. Researchers at Tulane Medical School have discovered a human retrovirus called the human intracisternal A type particle or HIAP. It is the first, got it, the first A-type retrovirus to have been found in humans. Okay, retrovirus B is what? HIV. Hmm. Retrovirus. Where have I heard that before? Hmm. It's going to come to me. Continue reading. Research daddy, data strongly suggests that this virus is the cause, did you hear that? Is the cause of four well-known autoimmune disorders. These disorders are lupus, Sjogren's syndrome, very similar to lupus, Graves' disease, and juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. The autoimmune disease virus assay detects antibodies against HIAP these antibodies appear in approximately, get this, 95% of the patients with one or more of those four disorders. But in fewer than 2% of healthy individuals. So, this virus, the retrovirus A, is bad. <laughs> The company believes that infection by this virus may produce the differing symptoms of the disorders in different patients because of genetic variations in the immune system and of the patients. Other factors that I'm going to add to that that tell how this retrovirus affects you is how you acquired it. Was it through uh, a bloodstream transmission? Was it through the oral route? Was it inhaled? If it was through body fluids, what other body fluids? That'll determine where this, these diseases take hold. Also, underlying etiology. If you had a really bad viral infection as a kid with a high fever, of 105. All of a sudden your autoimmune disease may affect the kidney or the pancreas or neurologic because high fevers can be hard on your kidney, can be hard on your brain, can be hard on your pancreas. So it's not just genetic variations that determine how your autoimmune looks. 
So these published results of the study of an AIDS drug in Sjogren's patients suggest that antiretroviral drugs may act against this virus. So get this. An antiviral drug is used to treat for or can be used to treat four known autoimmune diseases. Between the four of them, lupus, Sjogren's, Graves, and juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. Okay? You're talking about millions of people. With wasting diseases. That inflame your immune system with an autoimmune disease that causes your lymphocytes to go through the ceiling and then causes those lymphocytes to attack tissue. Here's the problem. It's attacking the virus that's hiding in a tissue. So where can viruses hide? Pancreas? Yeah. Nerves? Oh, heck yes. Nerves, nerves, nerves. Endothelial lining? Yes. Scar tissue, yes, certain viruses. But for some reason, viruses really seem to love nerves for some reason. But they can attack the endothelial lining of your intestines, leading to long-term chronic autoimmune disease of the intestine or inflammatory disease. Notice how autoimmune disease, autoimmune diseases, have the same exact profiles as wasting viruses or long-term viruses. Well, a third of the people have a really severe outbreak, but then have a really significant immune response and never have another outbreak. That happens with multiple sclerosis. 30% of MS flare-ups do not result in a second flare-up. That's good news if you get diagnosed third of the people have what's called chronic progressive where you just don't get over it and it just seems to linger and linger through your entire life as you slowly die <laughs> um, and, and, and the reason I laugh at that is because the, here, the medical system I, I, I'm uncomfortable but the medical system will not be telling you this and I come from the medical system. So when I say that, it's a very uncomfortable thing to say, you're slowly dying with autoimmune because no doctor's gonna tell you that. They're gonna tell you it's an inflammatory disease. So, so you're slowly degrading. That's chronic progressive. And then there's the th other third of the population that have remission followed by activation remission activation remission i got to believe that this new uh, virus that i don't want to say the name i got a i got a suspicion that the results are going to be the same uh, as these autoimmunes i think a third of the people are going to fully recover and never have another problem. I believe a third of the people are going to have chronic wasting, and I th believe a third of the people are going to have remission followed by activation followed by remission. That's, that's placing my bet on. That's a prediction. I'm pretty sure that's what's going to happen. Because now we're finding more wasting viruses in other autoimmune diseases and guess what people since 2001 I've been calling autoimmune a viral infection since 2001 I wrote a paper in 2003 called the uniform theory of disease uniform theory of disease nobody on planet earth has wrote a uniform theory of disease until I tried to submit one to a couple different publications what do you think happened to that paper? And here we are, 20 years later now, and they're finding wasting viruses in Parkinson's, 
They're finding wasting viruses in Alzheimer's. They're finding wasting viruses in what? Let's all say it together. Autoimmune diseases. So, here we are giving an antiviral drug for autoimmune. Hey, guess what? They give hydroxychloroquine to autoimmune. And that's been purported and proven to be an antiviral drug against various viruses. I'm not naming the specific viruses. But the National Institute of You Know What? They did a one on SARS-1. SARS-1 called uh, hydroxychloroquine a potent, a potent inhibitor. That's not my terminology. That's N-I, you know what. So, ladies and gentlemen, there's a lady out there who worked at the N-I, you know what, under Dr. F, and he fired her because she found a interferon treatment for H-I, you know what, for AIDS. And it was an interferon therapy, and he was looking for a vac. You know what? He was looking for a shot. And he did not want an interferon treatment. But, funny, she was terminated, he confiscated her work, and now his name appears on as an inventor of that. But he, she was talking about how the childhood you know what the shots that we just the normal ones were contaminated well the ones who claim they were contaminated with something called magalase well they're dead right now they're they're dead a whole bunch of them died within just weeks of each other three alone on father's day alone because hitmen pick you pick on you on holidays they know you're going to be home they know where to find you you let your guard down. There's very few people out on the road. You know, it's, the weather's kind of cold. You don't expect it. Especially on Christmas. New Year's. But. Here we are. Another lady says. They were contaminated with a retrovirus. And then she said it was responsible. This lady said it was responsible for several including uh, children, autoimmune diseases. Well, here we have children, childhood, juvenile, juvenile arthritis. Juvenile arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis. So what happens is, is a, viral, a virus like Epstein-Barr or anything else hides in nerve tissue or connective tissue or endothelial tissue and goes into dormancy phases and, and, and waits for you to have stress and then it reactivates. When it reactivates, sometimes it turns on the antibacterial immune system. And that is more destructive of tissue than the lymphocytes. And so, I mean, ever seen an acne scar? Don't tell me the white cells don't create scars. Ever have a boil? It leaves a scar. So, and that's your immune system. Because some of the peroxides damage healthy tissue. So, so we have a lady out there who's seen that the blood supply could be contaminated with retrovirus A. And now I've been waiting to find this article to prove her right, Dr. Judge Judy, I'm going to call her, Dr. Judge Judy, 
and because um, I'm trying to avoid certain terms that'll get me flat. But she's an outspoken critic of what's happening in this um, situation with the viruses. And she's outspoken critic of Dr. F and what's happening there. Uh, she's basically described a, a criminal organization. She could be sour grapes, but yet when she says something that sounds outrageous, that they've contaminated uh, shots that were hurting children, creating long-term suffering. I mean, some, these diseases go on for 30, 40 years as you slowly waste. And, and man, the hardship placed upon the health insurance. Don't think our premiums don't get affected by that. So here we are. Tulane University finds a retrovirus and guess what? Nobody talks about it. Nobody talks about using anti-HIV medicine for autoimmune. Yeah, it's done, but you don't hear it hyped over and over again because why? Because that's just too big a clue that viruses cause autoimmune. When you say that the immune system is attacking itself, it would, the body is attacking itself, all of a sudden, autoimmune becomes very, very expensive. When you call it a viral infection, hey, hey, cyclovir, antivirals, come on, let's go, get going. Another conspiracy is Planet X. We've had a huge increase in earthquakes. Those are public record. You want to argue public record? You're not going to do it with me. But if something big was coming, uh, it would affect our our crust of Earth. It would shift, um, and tidal tidal forces can crush asteroids. Tidal forces can crush comets. Just ask planet Jupiter what it did to Shoemaker Levy. It pulverized that thing into a hundred pieces. With what? Gravity. <laughs> okay. Gravity, then you have the heat of re-entry, but you know these things fragmented before re-entry. So our plates would become active, earthquakes would become active, volcanism probably becoming more active because well, we have volcanoes that sit on fault lines. So you shift the fault lines, your volcanoes become more active. But this picture, this was a study. Notice we. Uh, kind of try to hide the name of the people who did this because they came under huge, huge... Yeah, yeah, that one. Huge backlash for um, posting this data and compiling GPS data showed that the plates had shifted. And the red arrow was the old directions and the longer the aerial, the faster the movement. The blue arrow is the new direction. And I want you to look off the lower left hand side of the screen. We see almost a complete shift, a 90 degree shift in direction. Guess where that is? That's over this South Atlantic magnetic anomaly. That's kind of weird, huh? So, the, it has affected Earth. <laughs> and the plates have shifted. It's not a conspiracy theory. It's proven. So, if that object, the Planet X, happened to be really a dead star, which is talked about in a science encyclopedia. 
about a dead star at 50 billion AU or something like that. 50 billion miles. Um, but it talked about a dead star. And, and NASA talked about Planet X quite openly until mm, the late 80s. They figured out it, it was a binary twin to our own star. And then all of a sudden, hush, hush, hush. Well, the heating then caused by a second star in the solar system. I mean, you can't you can't put two furnaces in your bedroom without heating the bedroom even more. You know, you, how do you add a second heater and not create more heat? So, you know, we could argue about cosmic rays all day, but the increased heat has melted our ice. Melting our ice is melting the permafrost. Look at this. This picture, these are permafrost lakes, okay? These, and in between the permafrost lakes are ridges and humps. So what's happening is that the, these bumps, they blow up, poof, and then they sink, they subside, they form holes. They pop, and leave like a little crater. We've seen the one in Russia, very famous. Then we have winter, and then summer comes and it melts again. And there's parts of you know the Arctic that never melted in the summer. But now parts are melting in the summer. And that's when you need the ice the most to reflect the radiation. So then we have these lakes. And these lakes show you where methane is popped. And then the water permeates downward through the clays, the soils, the gravels, and triggers the leakage of even more methane. And some of the methane they're tapping into now with these methane lakes is old methane. Old methane, which is millions of years old. That's the methane they hit when they dr drill really deep for oil. That's old methane. These lakes are tapping in to a methane source we had not even worried about. We had not even calculated. We have not even factored into any climate model that is in existence today. And there is not a climate scientist, this is actual factual truth. Find out for yourself. Ladies and gentlemen, there is not a climate scientist on planet Earth who will tell you that a runaway methane event is a good thing. There's, in fact, there's not a climate scientist on planet Earth that will tell you a runaway methane event isn't bad. They will all tell you it's not good. Runaway methane is not good. Runaway methane means you can't control. You've lost control of your climate. And you can blame carbon dioxide all day long and blame us little peons for this. But the bottom line is, is NASA admits to the existence of Planet X decades ago. Kind of hard to put the genie back in the bottle, isn't it? But you would see a change in all the planets. And we've showed people over and over again, actual, obvious, visible, with your own two naked eyes, changes in all the planets. Every planet. Every single one. And you, that's what you would have to do. And then we found, all of a sudden, through Ulysses' experiment and other experiments, that we have all of a sudden this huge presence of neutral helium, and they call it a cloud. And somebody took this neutral helium and plotted surface temperatures against the amount of helium. 
And guess what? They came under attack. Yep. See it at lower right? ICRI, Intergalactic Cosmetary Array Intensity. That means it has nothing to do with the origin of the sun. It has to do with the origin of something else. Inter, it's intergalactic. It's not solar. Otherwise, they would say solar cosmic rays. Solar rays and cosmic rays are completely two different types of particles. And it describes the, where they originate from. Look at this intergalactic cosmic rays. Look at left middle. Intergalactic cosmic rays. From 26 to 400 kilometers a second. We reported that back in 2014. In fact, we said 25 to 450 kilometers a second. Because 450 describes what it's doing at the sun. They're describing the fastest it can be around Earth. So it hasn't made it to the sun. But you, you know, but you get downstream, you'll get 450. We're getting it right now. Accelerated curves to almost every instrument reading either accelerating down or accelerating up. Why? Because the approach and the distance of this object affects the concentration of energy and particles. The closer it gets, the denser the particles get, both big particles and little particles. The closer it gets, the more energy we see. The greater it, gravitational magnetic influences we see. And I ask you, have you heard any rumors about our magnetosphere? Of course you have. So then we have this incredible ultraviolet C, which is, you know, part of the blame of the, the melting of ice. I mean, uh, we used to have, we showed many people, this is a fact, in 2004, they re raised the UV index from a maximum of 10 to the sky is the limit. Are you kidding me? And it's not even a shift. That's like a whole new paradigm for measuring. Most people aren't aware of the megatons of death happening upon the planet. We, we, we stopped making videos because we would post the list. We were getting the list off of a couple extinction protocols and uh, a couple other people that were following mass animal die-offs. Some of those places were shut down that were documenting mass animal deaths. Pretty soon we started seeing articles about it in the mainstream and guess what they were attributing to the mass animal deaths? Um, everything but what was killing the animals basically. And sometimes they just use the word mystery. A lot of mystery stuff going around these days. So, when the people that are supposed to be protecting you are shredding your constitution to keep you safe, are the same people who are polluting your water and looking the other way, are they keeping you safe? are the people who start wars that kill 60 million people. Did they keep you safe? Did they keep us safe? No. World War II? Again, another 60 million people. So you're looking at 120 million people in two wars. I mean, and that's about 10 years worth of war. How many men did we kill in Vietnam? 50,000 casualties. How many men died after Vietnam? Another 50,000. 100,000 casualties. Vietnam. So, if depopulation has happened before, what scenario would trigger a depopulation agenda amongst the billionaire elite, the military-industrial complex, 
the global, actually, industrial complex, uh, the global organizations, what would they want? And basically, they would want decreased competition if, in fact, Earth was going through an extinction. And I've proven, and, so, and, and I'm quoting some scientists from, like, Stanford. I mean, Stanford has stood up to Uncle Sam. They, they've, they've done autopsies on tiny humans and called them non-human, partially non-human in the face of huge, huge intimidation. Go Stanford. One of the top UFO researchers in America, a uh, professor at Stanford, or was. So Stanford said we're we're in an extinction. No doubt about it. But they're forbidden to tell us why. And so am I. But I'm doing it anyway. So we have this intense ultraviolet. We have these cosmic ray particles that are causing some of the ultraviolet with the collisions they create. The X-rays are created by electron exchange. The gamma is created by particle collisions. And altogether, we have a radiation soup that we're swimming in, starting an ongoing catastrophe that cannot be turned around. Earth is trying to turn it around by putting more water in the atmosphere through evaporation. And that is helping, but it's not. What do people do? They revert back to politics. A lot of people, their identity is politics. They think they know it all. And when you play politics, you're, you're, you're doing the armchair quarterback. You're doing the armchair president. President should be doing this. Well, you know, all I can say is in the last 10 years, we have pointed out so many lies put forth by government and mainstream news. Government actually tainting the mainstream news. Politicians and employees of the government. We have put out so many and exposed so many lies. We're not allowed. We're not allowed on any widespread public venue anymore. And to me, that's the ultimate test of the truth. If you start getting censored, <laughs> you could be telling the truth. So, ladies and gentlemen, beyond the shadow of a doubt, we know that the Earth is going into extinction. And we sought out to prove how and why because that's what you need to prove your case and without that intermediate intermediary connecting of the dots you can't prove anything so to prove there was a planet X we had to go find all the symptoms do exist and they do we had to prove that it's hurting the earth and not carbon dioxide. And it's, we proved that. Uh, you know, methane's 10, 20 times worse. Some people say 100. Some people say 80, you know, whatever. It's, it's at least 20 times worse than carbon dioxide. And, and how often do you hear methane ever talked about? Ever on mainstream anything. It should be like every day. But no. They, they want you to hear the word conspiracy theory 30 times in a single 24 hour period. All the while they're pulsing you with either something to make you agitated or something to make you feel calm. It's a conspiracy theory. 
So calling something a conspiracy theory, they could pulsate you with endorphin triggering electromagnetic frequency. But then when they talk about the people that talk about the conspiracies, conspiracy theorists themselves, they could hit you with adrenaline. Ooh, fight or flight. All of a sudden you, for some reason, hate conspiracy theorists. You just hate them. Is that, has that happened to you? Is that happening to you now? You know, people are talking about 5G. 5G, how bad 5G is. How they're using microwaves to do all kinds of things to you. And how they have drones now that can emit focused frequencies at you. Not just microwave. Radio wave. They, whatever they want. And then, you know, pulsate them at a certain, at a certain frequency. See what happens. I mean, they have it, and I and there's the list that describes that technology. So, when they've lied about the cause of World War One already, I've just proved it to you. You didn't know. It, unless you were a subscriber, you didn't know that that all the, every single human being that started World War One was a blood relative of each other. Why didn't you learn that in school? You should be you should be furious. They kept that from you. And one way to get you to support eugenics which is the thinning of the herd and preventing the birth of, of you know, subhuman population, uh, uh, undesirables, and getting the rid of undesirables. Well, and preventing them from breeding. It's easier to support eugenics when you're starving. And if you're clinging to a raft, and I use this analogy way too much and there's only enough food for a day and yet you got 10 people you know and there's only enough food for three people for a day you got 10 people that want to eat what's going to happen uh, you, you might favor eugenics well that's an old guy over there and he don't have any family and she She's got a chronic illness, and all of a sudden, you know, you get kicked off the island. Oh, excuse me, the raft. So starvation is a way to implement a eugenics program. Make people hungry. You know, when, when people go their first day without food, things will change. And they're banking on it, in my opinion. But there are people out there, you know, saying extermination. They're doing it. They're going to do it. They're, and um, they're going to want every human being tracked. Uh, they want complete and absolute control over every human being. And, you know, there could be a utopian society down the road somewhere where, you know, if somebody desires to maliciously hurt you, we well, could figure it out before they do. And we could deal with that. Pre-crime. We could tell what you're thinking. That's, you know, I mean, that kind of technology, I mean, they talk about it in the patent list. They had a technology in Germany. If you had cancer, they scanned your brain and they, and they told them exactly what your stress issues were that would create stress hormones and suppress your immune system. 
and they would tell you, you have abuse issues. You have financial issues. They would tell you by looking at your brain. So things can be used for the good of man. But, you know, when the people who are protecting us have poisoned our water and without liability, have poisoned the uh, shot supply and nobody's, you know, held responsible, have created wars that have now got rid of 120 million people and the only war crimes were against the Nazis. You know, those are the only tribunals that we ever have seen. I mean, these are the people who are supposed to protect us. And, you know, in all of these wars, there were things we were never told. And there were things we were told that weren't true. There were staged false flag events. Some of them say the Lusitania was one of them. But it was what got us into war. Pearl Harbor, stand down. Well, we've we seen police stand down on the worst day of rioting this nation had seen since Martin Luther King days. It was, it was nationwide. And they had reporters and cameras and blimps and drones and they, they had excellent footage and they, they were just going from one city to the next. Okay, Bob, let's let's go over to Judy down there in Chicago. Judy, how is it? Oh, it's terrible. Our country is falling apart by a bunch of paid people who are paid to do this. Oh, yeah, and there's a pallet of bricks right over there. Guys, wake up. Turn off the TV. Turn on some music. Turn on your computer and start doing some research. See what other people have to say. So when are people going to realize? If somebody sends you a link about a doomsday, about the STHF, the, the crap hitting the fan, somebody sends you a link about depopulation and human extermination, if somebody sends you a link about New World Order and Illuminati, they're doing it because they're afraid for you. They care about you. They're worrying about you and they're expressing their love for you by doing this. And because of the indoctrination and because of the manipulation and because of the brainwashing, if you find yourself completely incapable of realizing these people are afraid for you and they're not trying to hurt you whatsoever, you're going to have to ask yourself, one day why you treated them so poorly because of their opinion why you wouldn't listen why you didn't just look at what they are looking at sure you could you could look at the sun and reject it and say it's not really there i mean you, you could be as psychotic as you want to be but that does not give you the right to hurt the people that are reaching out and and fearing for your futures. So next time somebody sends you a link that you think is a conspiracy theory, you need to realize all conspiracy theories start from a single fact. You need to realize that there's something there that the person's very concerned about. You need to understand what is really going on and not listen to a TV that is riddled with pulsating frequencies. You have got to understand how dysfunctional it is when somebody is expressing concern for your future, how dysfunctional it is to spit in their face, to call them crazy, to ridicule them and beat them down because that is the definition of psychotic and sociopathic. Somebody expresses love and you turn around and express hate. That means you're now turned to the side of evil. That's you. So don't let it be you. Thank you for listening.